Hi, this is Demo 3, making a former for using in the vacuum form. So when using a vacuum former, um, you will need to uh, make some preparations and you will need to make a former for your vacuum former. Um, you could make a, it from a selection of materials, that is your former. Um, you could make your former using clay, wood, foam, believe it or not, or plaster. Okay. So, um, your former is a shape that is solid, normally, um, and this might be a solid former shape. Uh, the ideal shape for a former is something that is uh, quite round, doesn't have any sharp edges, and it needs to avoid having undercuts. Right, so as I've said, the ideal shape for a former, the ideal shape for a former, is uh, a dome. Now, and a dome is obviously a three-dimensional shape. Now, uh, that's just a two-dimensional drawing for it. Okay, so um, what you want to avoid with all formers is having a shape that has undercuts. So anything that might go in near the base will be seen as an undercut. There is a reason for that, and I will just show you that just through a diagram. I draw on the board. Let me just rub this out here. So this is your side view of your former. Um, that being um, one with undercuts. These would be considered to be undercuts just here. Now, um, if this is from the side view, your plastic which I will demonstrate anyway. We'll go over this space here. And eventually you'll have your, your plastic formed shape, really like a mould from your former. Okay. Now, if you have undercuts, as you'll probably see as I'm drawing, If you have undercuts, you will have a shape that goes in to this space here. And you may have already guessed what might happen. As a problem to the undercuts, you will not be able to take your former out. So you won't be able to take that out once you've formed the plastic over your former. Okay? So ideally, you should have a shape that is free of undercuts. So there's a shape like that, and that's why I describe or I use really a dome as a, as a demonstration. Obviously, as I was saying before, you, you sh if that's not the shape that you want, then um, that's not the shape you want. You want to create a shape that has, that reduces the amount of undercuts because you will not be able to take the full round otherwise. Okay, so you have your ideal shape and then you have your plastic mould which is then heated up and um, creates that dome shape. And as you see, you will then easily be able to extract that out of your mould. So the idea for you uh, creating uh, a former is so that you can actually create some sort of shell and uh, this is a process that's used in industry um, and you'll find that quite a lot of plastic uh, products or components are either vacuum formed or they're injection moulded. If they're made from a type of sheet plastic, they're, they're often vacuum formed, but inje injection moulding is a completely different process that requires you making a solid plastic shape.
there are there are also other types of uh, uh, plastic processes like blow molding. Um, that is a, is a way you might produce a bottle, as an example, a plastic bottle. Um, but at, in college here, we only have uh, these two processes, the, the, the two processes I've mentioned, which is vacuum forming and the injection molding. Right. Okay. So uh, you, once you have your former, you can use that former, this being the former, over and over again. This is your plastic mould. And so the idea is that you're able to replicate that form over and over again. Okay. Hi, this is part two of demo three using a vacuum former. Okay, so we have a vacuum former here and uh, this is the vacuum forming material but it's a thermoplastic um, which means basically that it uh, reacts to heat right, and changes form. Right. Okay so we have uh, certain parts that I need to make, your, make you aware of um, on the vacuum former. Um, first of all I'd like to show you the bed um, or the platform where you would place your your plaster former. Uh, you could place that anywhere really on the bed. Um, the bed raises and drops, and you this handle here that raises and drops your former or the table. Um, over here we have the heater that will then bring heat to the plastic. Uh, normally the heater takes probably about five, five to ten minutes when you first switch it on. Probably more like ten minutes to actually heat up. So you need to switch it on and wait for about ten minutes before you can use it. We have a built-in clamp here. Now that's used for clamping down the plastic. Um, which I'll show you in a second. You have uh, clamps that are used then to hold the main frame clamp down, like that. Move that up. You have uh, a, a range of buttons here. Most of them are for the heater. So what you'd need to do is switch it on first of all, and the heater. And when you, you'll know it's on, you'll know all the heaters are on, because this, actual, this heating unit is made up of four heaters. And they're all arranged in, a, in certain ways within that unit. You need to make sure that the button's on. When the, all the lights are on, you know that the heat is on. Okay. So now for the process of vacuum forming. Right, okay, this is your vacuum forming sheet as I've shown you earlier. Um, can you please make sure that you take off the protective cellophane first, put it to the side. Now you'll find that your the type of vacuum forming sheet that we buy um, is has a smooth surface on both sides but one side is glossy and the other side is matte and has a matte finish. Right, so that's glossy and that's matte. Now you need, to, you need to decide which side you're going to use. Okay, obviously if you want the outside of your shell to have a glossy finish, then you need to put the glossy up. Okay. So place your, um, your plastic sheet on the opening, making sure that it's, e it's, it's equally spread on the frame. You can then make sure, once you've put the clamp down, make sure that you can see a bit of the plastic all the way around, because that then means that it's fully clamped down 
elbow is feeling fully held in this, at this point. You can then use your two clamps to fully fit it in place so that there's no movement there at all. And at that point, with the table down, you can pull your radiator over. That will take about five minutes or so to heat up. If it's been on for 10 minutes, it'll probably take about five minutes. Okay, so, um, as I've said, when you actually put your plastic in, it'll take about five minutes. So it might take a little um, shorter if you've got um, a shorter time if you've got quite thin plastic. So the thicker the plastic, the longer it takes to heat up. And you need to get to the point where the plastic is quite almost like a quite springy, almost like a trampoline. Um, so you can check it by um, looking at it through. Are the, uh, the slits that you'll find between the table itself and the radiator. So I'm going to put the radiator over now and allow it to cook or heat up for a while and I'll take it off and I'll show you um, the quality of the, the plastic at the point of it being back in form. What you can do at this stage is move the radiator back just to check, making sure. on a timer that is for a thinner um, vacuum forming sheet so I've, I've ignored that and I'm allowing it to um, get um, cook a bit for a bit longer. Okay. So just carry on checking it's almost at that point where it's quite springy now as you see it's starting to spring. I think it's ready now. So what I do, I pull the table up and then I flick a button here so the vacuum. And I have my former um, and my mould also. So that is a vacuum. What's happened is all the air has been sucked out of that space. And um, to try and separate the plastic from the, what is the, the plastic former, Pushing some of the air back in so that the, the, the plastic separates from the, the plastic itself. But they shouldn't be, because they've both got quite shiny surfaces. I'll make that off. Now that I've got um, my, my form um, created in the plastic, I can switch that off. Um, I've done my separating by pressing that button there. And I've uh, obviously I've used the vacuum to and I've switched that vacuum off, um, switched it on to suck all the air out, switched it off to stop that process from happening. Okay, so I can now release my clamps, lift up, lift up and it, it doesn't even stick, so it comes right out and you have a vacuum, vacuumed shape. There is the original. Now, um, you might find, if you look at this uh, former, it has uh, two holes. Now, those holes are quite helpful 
Um, not only do they suggest that that's where the eyeballs are, um, or the irises, but um, that's also where air can be sucked out of that space, creating a, a more detailed form. Okay, so the air gets sucked through that also, um, making sure that that the the, the 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 air itself is sucked from that space. Okay, so that is part of the reason why those holes are there. Um, so any areas on your form that are, have, are quite deep um, in comparison to the rest of the form can be drilled with holes and that means that the air will be sucked through that hole and you know, pull, pulled towards the surface of your, your plaster itself or your former itself. Okay? And that's the result.